Let us see how OFTM works in time domain. Assume that these are the symbols that need to be sent over a wireless channel in a serial manner. Recall from lecture 8 that when the data rate is low, that is the symbol time is large, then the multipath copies of these symbols arrive very close in time to each other. However, as we increase the data rate, the multipath copies start interfering with future symbols and we can see that one symbol has an effect on the next resulting into inter-symbol interference and distorting the signal. As an intermediate step, assume that we divide these serial symbols into blocks of 6, where 6 is just for an example and we insert the guard interval in between. We will cover this guard interval later and you can safely ignore it here. The most important point is that suppose that we have access to a set of parallel wires in the air equal to the number of the symbols in one block. For example, for a block of six symbols, we have a set of six parallel wires in the air. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we send each symbol onto one parallel wire. Minus one, plus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one minus one plus one minus one minus one. as a result of this strategy each symbol which occupied time tm is now occupying a time of 6 tm is now occupying a time duration of 6 tm we say that the symbol length has increased has the symbol rate reduced no because we are still sending six symbols in parallel on independent parallel wires that do not interfere with each other the effect is that by introducing parallelism, we have fooled a frequency selective channel into behaving as a frequency flat channel. We call it frequency flat because this symbol in terms of multipath only interferes with itself and it, no inter-symbol interference happens with the next symbols. The question now is how can we have access to a set of parallel wires in the air? From slide number 24 and 25 in lecture number 1, we have seen that complex sinusoids are orthogonal to each other in a time duration of nts seconds. Therefore, to create this set of parallel wires in the air, we just employ these complex sinusoids for a duration of ntm seconds, where we see that each complex sinusoid spans k cycles per nts seconds. In this example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and in this case it is 0 cycles per NTS seconds. The main thing we learned in lecture 1 is that they are all orthogonal to each other, behaving as a set of parallel wires in the air and actually acting as a set of parallel waves. Orthogonality implies that the correlation at time shift 0 is 0. This is best seen with the correlation between this and this. This is a constant, so correlation just implies the sum of all the samples and the sum of all these samples in one cycle is zero. As you know that the area under a curve of a sinusoidal wave is half cycle is negative, half cycle is positive and the area is zero whenever there is an integer number of cycles. So if we define the frequency of the first complex sinusoid, which in the case of OFTM called subcarrier as F1, then the remaining frequencies are KF1. So they are all integer multiples of a fundamental frequency. Let us see an, as an example what happens when data symbols are modulated. We take the same example of six symbols and modulate them on a set of parallel waves. In this case, we call them subcarriers. On a set of parallel subcarriers, symbol number zero travels on subcarrier zero or a sinusoidal wave of zero frequency. Symbol number one travels on a sinusoidal wave of frequency F1, frequency F2 and so on. At the transmitter they are all added together and sent on the air. At the receiver this signal is correlated with each of these subcarriers in parallel with each other. Since the correlation between them is zero, the correlation of this subcarrier with all five will be zero and maximum with this one and hence we get our minus 1 back. Similarly, the correlation of this subcarrier number 1 is 0 
with all the other subcarriers but maximum with only this one and then we get our plus one back this is because the received signal is a sum of all these continuous waves or subcarriers after this correlation we turn this parallel bit stream into a serial bit stream at the receiver to get our original data back recall that we said that a guard interval is inserted between each set of parallel waves this guard interval is actually the cyclic prefix and all this means is that we take a certain number of samples and prepend them at the start of the data signal the length of this cyclic prefix is the maximum expected channel length so that when the multipath copies arrive they do not interfere with our main data block we say that we have avoided the inter symbol interference here we have a signal viewpoint where last few samples equal to the maximum expected channel length are brought back and prepended in the start of the signal another reason to use the cyclic prefix is to turn linear convolution of the channel into a circular convolution the details of which we saw in lecture 9 a third reason to use the cyclic prefix is to avoid intercarrier interference remember that we said these parallel waves are called subcarriers in the context of OFTM so after the convolution with the channel their length increases and we know that they are only orthogonal within a duration of an integer number of periods therefore the channel destroys the orthogonality however we see that the channel can only affect the region where the cyclic prefix lies and if we discard the cyclic prefix at the receiver these set of parallel waves become orthogonal again the question is why equalization becomes simpler in this case while we will see this in detail in the frequency domain here we can see that each subcarrier interferes with the subcarrier of the same frequency and when multiple waves of the same frequency are added to each other the result is that we have a set of parallel channels in summary we can say that the oftm transforms one high rate serial stream into several low rate parallel streams like this and the introduction of this low rate parallel stream makes the equalization simpler